Hello there, everyone, and welcome to our weekly Wednesday chat. So one of the most important things when you're getting started in the business side of surface design is to really make sure that you're spending a lot of time on, the cre on your creativity and what you love the most. My biggest piece of advice is continue to really go inward, continue to examine what it is that you love, what the process is that you go through to create your artwork that you absolutely love, how much time and energy that takes within your day as you start to think about how to, to turn it into a business. One of the most important things is to ensure that whatever you want that business to eventually be, that it be grounded in a, in a place that you absolutely love and that you wake up every day and you cannot wait to jump out of the bed to both do creative work and to support your business. My journey took a couple of twists and turns. So when I first got started in surface design, that was about three years ago now, I was very much in my first year just completely focused on learning. I was taking a whole bunch of courses. So for those of you who aren't members of Skillshare, you can get two free months through me. And I always want to make sure that it is easy for you to find that link. There's no limit. And you can get your first two months for, totally for free. And I teach both watercolor classes, which is the, I'm just sending you a link that will take you to a watercolor class, but you don't even have to take my classes. You can just use my link and get the two months free. So anyway, I put that in the comments for any of you who might be interested in joining Skillshare and getting two months free. What I was, the reason that I started there was because my, the way my journey started and the way I would want you, I would really encourage you to also just lean into where you are right now. So lean into the exploratory work you're doing in surface design, lean into this creative period where you're just creating a bunch of patterns and you're learning new techniques and you're finding out what you really love because that will help your unique style emerge and will also help you understand as you start to think more on the business end, how do you want to spend your energy and what is going to continue to bring you joy every single day. So when I got started, after I got my foundation in place in terms of feeling like I had a unique style and I had something to offer to the world and I was ready to put it out there, I initially thought that I was going to go down this path of hard goods. And what I mean by hard goods is things in this sort of in the stationary and technology space. So not fabric. I love all of the items that you have on your desk, whether that is a notepad that has a pretty pattern on the bottom, or whether that's a set of pencils that have a beautiful pattern that's wrapped around the pencil, or if that's a paperweight that has a beautiful pattern that you see inside it. I have a really pretty photograph of one that I made several years ago that's on my website. It's a little um, watercolor pop, orange poppy that you can see inside the bottom of the a paperweight. And I just love those kind of accessory items as well as cards and notebooks and iPhone cases because I love to always have it like a new iPhone case that has one of my designs on it. I definitely wanted to start down that path. I wanted to get print on demand shops up and running so that I could earn a little bit of passive income. I wanted to also purchase some of my own products so that I could do pop-up shops. And what I discovered, it might've taken me six months or maybe a year to sort of discover was that along that path, I also discovered that I love to teach and I, I come from a family of teachers. And in fact, I married into a family of teachers. My mom was a teacher. My grandfather was a high school teacher. My aunt has been a teacher off and on in her life. My older sister is a professor at the university. She, she teaches at UMass Amherst. And I, my husband, who's a, who's a lawyer, his mom and dad were both teachers. They both taught um, in high school in the Los Angeles area. The reason I'm just bringing that up is because my business now has sort of evolved towards a more heavily weighted teaching component because I love that part of the business. I love to teach everything I know. I love to interact with you guys and provide you with encouragement and support and, and try to understand kind of where you are right now and what would be most valuable for you to learn, to, to continue to move your own, your own dreams forward. So I share that with you because your journey might evolve too. You might start out thinking that you want to do surface design in a certain way. And then as you put that out into the world and as you learn and you get, you, you just see how that feels and what's involved and what effort, what, what does the effort look like and where do you need to spend your time? It may evolve as well. 
that's the beauty of surface design. There's so many options. There's so many different options out there. That is what I wanted to just talk about a little bit today, that there's the teaching route, there is the print on demand route, which is a passive income route. There is selling your products on your own website through um, either Squarespace or a Shopify type of a website. There is also your ability to, um, to manufacture some of your own goods and then do in your own local community, sell those goods at fairs, especially during high volume times of the year. So Easter is a great time to when people are going to want to buy small presents and mugs, for example, are like the perfect Easter like present because you can put candies in it and then wrap it in cellophane and then and everyone can it can have one at your Easter dinner table. And then the holidays, of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas, but the 4th of July is another really, really great gifting time. So that can be a really, really fun way for you to have more interaction with your customer directly because you're actually buying some of your own inventory and then you're selling it at a local fair or at a pop-up shop. A couple of the ways that I first got started was I just went, I'm in a very small town outside of Mill Valley and I went to our local, there's one absolutely adorable, tiny little, um, mom and pop shop craft store and I noticed that they featured people in their window and so I just walked in one day and I said I'm a local artist I have just been I've just reinvented myself after my long 25 year corporate career came to a crashing halt because I got laid off and so I'm reinventing myself and I now have something to show I've been working for the last several years to become a surface designer could I be featured in your window and she said yes and so it was like it was like it was amazing. And one of the things that I think we don't realize because we are sometimes, well, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. This type of interaction works really, really great for me. But what I wanted to say was that you don't know that people actually need you, right? Unless you put yourself out there. And when I reflect back on that decision to walk down there and show her my products and say, could I, you know, could I be featured in your window and could I sell these products here? And, and let's figure out what the, you know, there's going to be a split, a 50-50 split or a 60-40 split where of course if I'm selling them there, she needs to make some money too. So there was that whole kind of contractual side of it that was a big, big learning curve for me. But even more importantly, it was like, well, of course she wants to have new people in her window all the time. I mean, it's hard to get traffic into a retail store into the today's day and age because you can buy everything online. And so she was absolutely delighted. It was a win-win because she wanted to be able to feature somebody who's in the local community and would bring in potentially new customers. It would be a great way for her to update her window display. And then it would also allow me to actually sell some products in her store. And it was a tiny, tiny little collection. I only had a minuscule little, you know, half, not even half of a counter space, but I sold a whole bunch of beautiful cards and I sold my mugs and I also sold my beautiful notebooks. And so I had a little mini collection of three items that, um, that I sold down there. And that was just a, one of the great ways to kind of get started to figure out, well, how how do I want to build my business? So the message that I would love to leave with you with today is that the surface design industry is an incredibly supportive and encouraging and inclusive environment. There is room for everyone. And I know many of you read my Is There Room For Me blog post that I posted about a month ago, I think. There's room for you. There is absolutely room for you. And I wanted to make sure that I came on today to talk a little bit about the business side of surface design so that you know, so that you can start to think about, well, which one of those resonates with me? Which one of those do I think will be the place where I want to spend the most effort? Um, which are the ones that are going to continue to bring me the most joy and to be the place where you want to be spending your time and your energy and your focus? I will say bye for now. I always like to say in closing that I am Anna Follett and it's never too late to create.